four primeval titans and an alish norn so he can uh, almost be a ramp deck he does have four rampant growth and four green suns to go get uh, a number of one mana accelerants yep. so he can actually basically kind of foe uh ramp out he does have two ink moth to go with two castle wolfron yeah you know i, so I this actually... is ramp pod you know, Naya ramp pod. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna call it more of a ramp deck than anything. Um, sort of strange. We haven't really seen that maybe since a few Star City Invitationals ago. I know I know uh, that Reed Duke played one to a good finish a while back. Reed definitely was one of the people that was kind of a, a champion of of this deck. Um, I know that Ari Lax also very much liked it. Um, yeah, I don't know that I I was ever too excited by it. You know, I played it at um, at the Invitational in Baltimore last December. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it was it was good, but it was bad versus the other ramp decks, which was really the problem. Which the other ramp decks, uh, they're really on the wane right now, so maybe that's not a problem. Yeah, I, I'm pretty excited to see what his deck can do, especially against something like Red Green Aggro, which is it's just it looks like it's designed to just chew it up. Three Day of Judgment, one yeah. Terminus, and then of course all the usual suspects that punish the aggressive decks like Elesh Norn. He actually doesn't have Worm Coil Engine. One in the sideboard, but none main deck. Looking at Kevin's deck, four Pillar of Flame, three Bonfire, two War and Peace, four Green Suns, um, one Acidic Slime, a Pilgrim, nothing too special for Green Sun targets. Not in the main deck, anyway. Okay, Kevin Mullally. I believe... Uh... Mulliganing there. Max Brown as well. I think so. Maybe he was shuffling his hand and not his deck. Yeah, actually, that looks like the face of a man who's kept his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kevin Mullally might be on the play here. Or it's a double mull. Hmm. Not sure. Max Brown, a local player. I think he's from outside of Boston, but I, I, I've seen him in quite a few PTQ top eights around here. Yeah, Kevin down to five, double mulling. Max keeping a hand of seven. So for Kevin, the number of cards in his hand really doesn't matter a heck of a lot. It's really the aggressive start that he gets. If he can go accelerant into a three drop into a four drop, something like that, he'll be in great shape no matter how many cards he has. And one of the things you usually don't see when the red green aggro deck wins is them with an empty hand. So, right. yeah, turn one Brita Paradise. And followed by turn one Brita Paradise, dueling birds. So we'll see what Max has for his second Very turn here. Stage, he has please. a forest Very and, solid. wow, just passes. Stage, that means he has nothing to play there. There's no wolves to hop out from the sky. No. Huh. Makes me wonder what type of hand he kept here. I'm gonna bet he's gonna drop a Solemn Simulacrum next turn if he gets the chance. I or a Green so. Suns for three. Yep. Though if he had a Green Suns, I would have been happy to Green Suns for two and get a Viridian Emissary. Definitely versus a red green aggro deck. We're gonna see a Green Suns for two from Kevin, probably getting a Strangle Root Geist. Yeah, almost always almost always a Geist when X equals two from the red green deck. No other targets of note uh, for two other than unless he wants to go down. And so here we see two power coming on in. Kevin now, does not look too happy. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Kevin says attack, and Maxwell does the tapping for him. I wonder if these two guys know each other. You know, that would be a great move by Max if he was trying to bait the attack with a wolf ear. <laughs> well, I mean, to be... I, I'm thinking about Jerry Thompson, and I believe uh, Nashville, stealing the token off of his opponent's card to, be, to, to use for a raft. <laughs> like, or, you know, like... Hey, yeah. Okay, there's a Solemn. Wow. Solemn Simulacrum, and uh, it fetches a... Planes. It looks like that might be a revised planes. It's a uh, it's a classy planes, is what it is. <laughs> I don't know if it's fourth or revised, but it's very well with uh, the full art Zendikar. Okay, the two are are not uh, are not acquaintances. Kevin Mullally here in the position where here. I had a conversation earlier with two players playing red green, and they were fighting over whether Pillar or Galvanic Blast was better. Here, Pillar means that Solemn Simulacrum does not draw a card. Yeah, Pillar way better at this point. And in for two. In for two. 
Maxwell Brown down to 16, but is about to untap and maybe play a Primeval Titan. Or even a Tame Judgment, honestly. Like, yeah. Uh, Primeval would be better, obviously. We'll see. He hasn't slammed it yet. Maybe thinking about something like Conscripts. Wants to make sure he doesn't die to any shenanigans in a game that he has uh, not locked up, certainly, but he's very far ahead. All his opponent has is mana and a 2 1 on a mold of 5. So, 4 mana. There's yep. the day. There's that day. 2 for 3. Oh, wait. Somebody's back. <laughs> and a rampant growth. It's really hard to measure magic nowadays in you know, the two for three, one for one type of thing, because all the cards nowadays seemingly do double duty. There's still value in doing it. There is. And we see six mana to three mana from Kevin Mullally. 16 life, a pretty healthy amount, but uh, three damage will help eat that away pretty quick. Remember, Kevin has double mulligan, so he is actually super nearly out of gas. Um, I believe he's got a Bird of Paradise in hand, so all it takes is a single card to answer that Strangle Root Geist, and Kevin will just be out. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm a little surprised Kevin didn't actually play the bird. He has Bonfires in his deck, and Sword of War and Peace, and, and Wolf Silverheart. I mean, the, the bird doesn't do any good by itself. I mean, in terms of uh, if, if he is trying to protect himself from a Day of Judgment, coming back with the bird afterwards is not great. No. Hopefully, for Kevin's sake, he doesn't draw something like a sword. So, Solemn will do his best blocking duty, or at least that's what Max would like. Fetches up the planes, and he'll just ship the turn. So, Max, also seemingly out of gas now, might have a green sun in hand. That, that could help explain why he's trying to ramp up to seven here without a play. And Kevin, I believe, drew another pillar. Definitely a red card. Not sure what it is, though. And yep, another pillar of flame for another Solemn. And swing for three. Max down to ten. And Kevin ships it back after playing his bird. Oh, Sigarda. Host of Herons, 5-4. That'll stop Kevin Cole. He needs a bonfire. But by the looks of it, that's not a bonfire. Has to ship it back. And, yep, and there's the life total. Max now at 10, as is correct. And he realizes that he really can't attack right now. Sigarda is such a monster. Yeah. <laughs> five, five, flying uh, on target of a bowl. Bonfire would be able to take care of things with some miraculous action. Five. So Hellrider for Kevin. But I'm not sure how much it does. He needs one more creature to really overload that Sigarda. Cavern of Souls, and wow, Maxwell, nothing. Just land, 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 and not even a Wolf Run or a Nexus out of all those lands. Ooh, Huntmaster. So Max really, really needs to draw a business spell right now, or he's gonna be in bad shape. That's a lot of creatures. Yeah. And they each do one when they attack. So Kevin, threatening lethal. We'll see what Max has. Is that uh, Soulbound Sage? I believe it is. Somberwald Sage, rather, not Soulbound. Caps for three mana of any color. Only for creatures, though. Super rampy ramp. Yep, it does, Two however, give him here. the chump blocker he needs to stay alive. Again, players, in the time tournament, your pairings for round three. Him just barely. So 
So Max with a lot of good draws right now. He can draw a Terminus, he can draw a Day of Judgment, he can draw his own Huntmaster, Eleshnorn. And here we go with a... I think it's going to be a block block. Yep, looks like it. A dead Strangle Root Geist, no damage. Yep, only... And you're trading a Strangle Root Geist for essentially a Somberwald Sage. Not bad, though. He gets to flip oh. his Huntmaster and deal Max two damage. Take two. And two more damage. So Max down to six. Yeah, and oh, re nothing. That's it. The lance. Wow. So a case of the extreme flood for Maxwell Brown. And that's a good example of uh, why you should not be afraid to go to five cards. <laughs> right. Exactly. Maxwell clearly kept a hand that didn't do a heck of a lot. If he had mold, who, who knows how that, how that game would have turned out. So, looking at the sideboard, Kevin has a Daybreak Ranger, won't see that one, won't see Naturalize, uh, Max didn't show him a Birthing Pod. Some cards I expect to see from uh, Maxwell Brown is Huntmaster of the Fells, almost certainly. A yep. very good card here. Um, I also expect to see Worm Coil Engine. For sure. I would be unsurprised by Thrun, just as a huge body that can drop down and make the Hellrider less good. And then the question starts becoming, how far do you want to go into Gutshot Terminus Day of Judgment? Hmm. I mean, because you can't go there infinitely. <laughs> you, right. you, your, your days knock out your own mana acceleration. And the Gutshots have a diminishing returns, but they also stop the early bird ramping that you can expect from your opponent, which is a bird elf deck. Right. I, I expect to see Max shave on his Birds of Paradise, maybe shave one or two Birds of Paradise, add two Terminus. Because the ability to put those Strangler Root Geist on the bottom is really, really strong. To deal with them in a way other than Day of Judgment, which just brings them back. Now, Maxwell Brown's list, uh, one interesting thing we've been seeing a lot is the reduction of prominence for Huntmaster of the Fells. Because Huntmaster is simply not very good against Delver right now because of the Angel. Yeah, There's a 3-4 Angel. Quick from the clouds, surprise kill, and uh, we only have one here, basically as a Green Sun Zenith target in the main deck, but he does have access to two more after board, specifically for decks like this, because against a Red Green Aggro deck, a Huntmaster is amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. It's actually one of the few decks that Huntmaster is amazing against, because even against the Restoration Angel, if you say, okay, well I'm not going to attack into it, I'm not going to take the bait, I'll just say go let my guy, well, they go end of turn, play a spell, play a Restoration Angel, attack. Right. And then you've wasted your entire turn, and he, he's just not that impressive, really. And, you know, that's that's sort of something that uh, I'm not a big fan of Kevin's deck and all the red-green decks in general. I'm not sure Four Huntmaster is really where you want to be. I think <laughs> I think there might be better uh, there might be better creatures. Like, for example, the Avenger. Yeah. Kevin's deck featuring zero Avengers. <laughs> That's a, a little different than Melissa de Torres that we saw earlier. I believe she had the full four, maybe three, but either way, a lot more. In terms Wolfer of Wolfer Avenger, four copies. Wow, Melissa de Torres. I believe she's still in the running, still X and one. From Kevin, uh, we should see Zealous Conscripts. He has three of those. That'll be great at stealing a Primeval Titan. Search up his Kessig Wolf runs. Active Aggression, most certainly. Maybe Arc Trail, depending on how much of a Birds of Paradise Lana War Elf he puts Max on, which I don't think he, he should. Uh, I think it would be correct to side in zero of those. I'm not sure of Melissa's record right now, but I believe it's X and 1. I, I, I can't verify that, though. Okay. Garrick Primal Hunter from Kevin, do you think he'll side that one in? You know, it's a solid card against a more controlling deck, and he did see Day of Judgment. I would be uh, I would be not too surprised by it. I expect the Zealous Conscripts to be a card to, to definitely be seen. Um, well, I mean, he only saw... Um, he only saw Sigarda for big things, but I mean, with Rampant Growth, I would expect Primeval Titan, maybe Inferno Titan. So I think those Zealous Conscripts are going to come in, um, if not the Act of Aggression as well. But the Garrick Primal Hunter, that's an interesting question. I mean, it's an easy call against a, a blue-based control deck. I'm not sure if it's the correct thing these days against a uh, 
you know, a green based control deck. Right. So, Kevin, on his way to Paris yet again, going to six cards. Looks like Max kept his seven. So this is three mulligans in two games for Kevin, but he's up a game. Right now, uh, pay no attention to the score on the screen. It is Maxwell Brown zero, Kevin Mullally one. Yeah, definitely is. It didn't seem like it would be at the, after the commanding position that Max Brown was in. Well, I mean, you, you have to not flood out. Flooding is a, a part of what happens in the game sometimes. Right. And, you know, looking back on it, it's pretty easy to say because Max didn't draw anything off the top of his deck, but maybe he used that day of judgment a little too early. I mean, what did he day away? He dayed away one of his own mana, which was not a big deal. He replaced nope. that, and he didn't look like he needed it. Nope. And he got rid of a bird, of a bird an elf, a lot more elf, and the Geist for the first time. Right. But maybe he could have just kept uh, taking three damage a turn. I'm not sure. It would have been, uh, yeah, it would have been three. So Kevin shuffling up. He's got his game face on. He does not like these mulligans. There's a six. I see a mountain as the only card. Oh, and five again. Four mulligans in two games for Kevin. Worked for him last time. Yeah, and it looks like that's what Max is saying to him, too. There's something to be said about decks that mulligan well. Um, some decks simply don't, <laughs> you know? Right. I take a deck like Storm. Storm can handle one mulligan fairly okay, but a second mulligan in a legacy deck like Storm, whatever variant you're talking about, it starts to really hurt. You know, you contrast that with one of the best mulliganing decks of all time, Dredge. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't really need much for a Dredge deck to get going. In Standard here, we have this red-green aggro deck, which often all it really cares about is getting a Geist or two into play. Right. And, I mean, often it can just ride those to victory, as we saw. A Geist plus a Hellrider, that adds up very fast. So Max must feel like he's being handed this match here, though. He's down a game. Huntmaster, Huntmaster, Geist, land, and maybe another land. Rampant. Max Brown will go fetch up a mountain, it looks like. Oh, no, oh. planes. Okay, interesting. Not sure what he needs the triple white for. Probably just has a, a red source in hand already. And Strangle Geist for Kevin. Drops Max to 18. It does set him up for sufficient mana for Sigarda. And there's Four mana one. hunt master. There's a hunt master. And that's the one hunt master. <laughs> and there's a little two-two wolf. <laughs> I bet you the table judge will replace. Uh, very fast. And there it is. Table judge is on it. So Max Brown back up to twenty. Kevin though not out of it yet. Will put up a fight. And Geist comes in, Wolf instantly blocks. Geist comes back as a 3-2. Oh boy, and it flips. Wow. Ouch. Kevin with no spell. Kevin to 18 and Max will swing in for four, it looks like. Dropping him to 14. Take four. There's not much to be done about that once you're in the position where you're on the back foot against the more controlling deck. No. I mean, not so good. Kevin does not really have much that can fight that. Silverhearts can fight that decently well, uh, as can sort of War and Peace. But he's on a pretty fast clock. As I see at least another land. It's going to be his own Huntmaster. I mean... That's that's fine. It's uh, Huntmaster is a, a fine way to fight Huntmaster, but it's not exciting. No, and that's not what your aggro deck wants to be doing. Okay. 
Maxwell Brown counting his mana. <laughs> <laughs> land Elishnorn. That's never good for the aggro deck. He's a little shy for land or for for all of that. Uh, I don't think. No, he hasn't laid land yet. He might have it. <laughs> I think we'd see him slam it if he did. Uh, yeah. Might be thinking about something like a primeval titan. I mean, want... he could just be thinking about offering a trade. Right, that too. He does want to play around any type of threaten effects that he might have. Worm coil. It says go. And zealous conscripts would not be the end of the world. No, it wouldn't. He's at 20 life. And I think I see a zealous conscripts in his hand. He does have one. And Max needs to make sure he doesn't randomly die to that card. And here it comes, Conscript. Sadly, all you can really do is just briefly take it, yeah. attack and gain the life, knowing that it's going to be all undone in a moment. Yeah, Zell's Conscripts versus Worm Coil Engine just does not do a lot. And in comes the Worm, temporarily uh, getting a little bit of life gain sucked away out of Maxwell Brown, which will be undone in a moment. Now Max gets to untap. And if he has something like a birthing pot here, the game is just over. But we'll see what he can do. If he has anything to follow up with the already impressive worm coil engine. In they come. Oh boy. No instant tricks of note here, so he is just offering uh, up the, the death of our flipped Huntmaster of the Fells. And there we see it. Yeah, that's, that seems like a great trade for, uh, for Kevin here. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin should be okay with that. Yep, 3-3 three, three down. And uh, the wolf remains. The worm coil will eat up the Huntmaster of Kevin's. Or did he not block it? Looks no, like he, he didn't block he it. he didn't okay. block it. Oh, and Prime there's... Evil Titan. Prime time. Coming and in. Goes back up to 20. Wolf run. If Nexus. Kevin has a Zealous Conscripts, that's 3, 9, 11, 13 damage. That is not a kill. No, not even close, considering that next turn Max will just gain six more. Six plus the wolf run. Right. 11. Is that a wolf run of his own? It is. And one, two, three, four. Huntmaster. Yep. Not, not great. Not exactly good when your opponent's going bigger. Yeah. This is uh this game should be going to game three unless something catastrophic happens here. I mean an ancient grudge or a naturalized during combat could be something Kevin has, but that's not great. No, it's not. Primeval Titan trigger, that's what Max is resolving right now. He'll go fetch up uh another Nexus and another Wolf Run. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan, joined in the booth here by Zach Hall. On our left, Maxwell Brown playing a ramp pod. And on the right, Kevin Mullally with red-green aggro. Yep, they're deep in game two right now. Kevin won game one despite a mold of five. And in this game, also mold of five. Not going as well, though. This yeah. game, Maxwell actually has the cards he needs. And we see the pump all in on the worm coil. And he's like, yep. Hmm. And we are going to the game three. Now, if you're Kevin Mullally, and you've seen the cards that you've seen, you have not yet seen a birthing pod. Are you putting um, Maxwell Brown on White Wolf Run? Or are you putting him on Ramp Pod? Well, I think the Worm Coil Engine is a partial potential giveaway. It, it is. I don't think it is as much as something like a Viridian Emissary or an Elishnorn would be, but if well, Kevin I, is really up on uh, 
the different variations of the ramp decks, I think he could. I mean, I, I guess I see Elish Norn in uh, nearly all of the White Wolf run lists that I've seen. You know, usually it's the question is, do they run Gideon or not? And then they run some sort of sweeper, and they almost always run Elish Norn. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, Did is Sigarda a hint one way or the other? I don't know. That's because you can green suns for Sigarda. You, you can Sigarda. Yeah. A lot of the green decks nowadays have a lot of redundancy in the ways that they can tutor up creatures. Uh, in you know, of course, both the green sun and the birthing pod. Um, I don't think you can side and naturalize uh, yeah. for for something that's at most a three of. Yeah, I don't think I, so. It's, the thing is, is when that pod hits, it's just really problematic. On the other hand, pod is also slow. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and know? costs life. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think he has any cards that he really wants to side out. Okay. So let's say you now I'm just going to keep following on this path. You've seen Worm Coil Engine. Is that by itself enough to think to yourself, Ancient Grudge isn't great, but I'm going to use it anyway? Ooh, um, well, if... If you've seen one Worm Coil Engine... You either think it's Pod, or you think there are more, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I I wouldn't hate siding in one Ancient Grudge. You know, he he's shown that he has Solemn Simulacrum. He hasn't played Sphere of the Suns yet, and probably doesn't have it. That said, though, even killing a Solemn uh, isn't all that bad. Especially if you're getting through a lot of damage. And then the potential blowout factor of Worm Coil Engine... I don't think one's unreasonable. So Kevin, on the play for game three, thinking about his opening seven, would hate to have to mulligan again, but will. Oh, goodbye. Wow. That is the fifth mulligan for Kevin Mullally. Mulligan Ollie the timey. Yikes. Hmm. Okay, Maxwell's joining him. Yep, he, he'll take his first mulligan of the match. <laughs> Looks like they're having a friendly match, despite not knowing uh, right, each other. Right. Which is something not a lot of people can do. A lot of people are just so stoic, unflinching, shuffling. Just... Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, in a match I had maybe three, four weeks ago against Michael Jacob, there is one of the more stoic players in the game. Yep. Yep. Darkest mage. I, don't, I, th I think he's gone entire matches without uh, without smiling. Matches? <laughs> oh, did I say matches? I meant months. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard that Michael Jacob did uh, three pre-releases one weekend, a midnight, then the Saturday, and a Sunday, and didn't smile once. Oh, man. It's tough to do. You usually have some young opponents at those pre-releases, <laughs> yeah. too. And there was even the Hell Vault, <laughs> which actually, if you open it up, you might not have smiled. No, probably. I don't. I don't really need any spin downs. <laughs> so Kevin stays on six. Must seem like a lot of cards to him. <laughs> it's true, more than ever before for him yeah. this match. Uh, Bird of Paradise from Maxwell Brown off of a forest. A slow to the party Landwehr Elf from Kevin Mullally. Yep, he'll still take it though. Four is really the flashpoint of his deck. And now Max has access to three mana. We'll see what he can do with it. He would love to play something like a Soulbound Sage or a Borderland Ranger. Green Suns, perhaps, getting an Emissary? That's Let's find too. out. And there it is. Emissary for an aggressive deck. One of the most frustrating cards to see. A pillar here would not be terrible. Pillar, though, not great in this matchup. No, it's um, it's a hard card to keep in, especially all four. I think you have to have some number, but the full four, I'm not so sure. I think I see a bonfire. I'm not sure, though. I thought that's what that was. He could bonfire for one, but I mean, that would just keep the mana situation the same as it is right now. Right. I think you wait on that bonfire. Wait till a late game. Look at that, Ooh, a sword. Uh, no third land, though. At this point, Kevin can equip an attack, but Rainian Emissary will do its job very well. Right. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan with Zach Hall. It is round seven out of ten rounds here at the Star City Games Open Series in Worcester, Massachusetts. 
we see the birthing pod make its appearance for the first time, sacrificing a Viridian emissary. This is going to be four life to ga gather a land, and uh, if they're still in there, uh, is there potential for a corruptor? Um, I no, he he doesn't have one in the seventy-five. He would love to go grab one, but Borderland he'll Ranger have to settle for a ranger. That's fine. Wow. Um. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, a sword is a lot of damage here. It really is. I I, I think Max has uh, something like four cards in hand, five cards in hand right now. Here comes the sword. Yep, it equips. And that's gonna eat the Borderland Ranger. Probably. Well, maybe not. I mean, he just there. He throws it in the way. Yeah. There we go. Pretty Says quickly go. throws it in the way. Maxwell Brown happy to time walk his opponent there. Now he could have access to six mana, perhaps. Yeah, if he plays something like a four drop and then ramps that into an acidic slime. He'll be in amazing shape. And here is what appears to be a land. Cavern. Cavern. Uh, naming giant? Yeah, I'm sure that'll name giant. Uh, maybe not. Uh, let's see, what else does he... No, giant seems pretty solid. Yeah, he, he has the red mana he needs. The Borderland Ranger fetched up the red, so I think it'll be giant. And we see... Oh, boy. Six mana. Name's Worm. That's a weird choice. Huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's really interesting. Acidic Slime. Oh, wow. Kill, and then and go find a Worm Coil Engine, this perhaps? Is, this is going to be pretty close to game here. Uh, yeah, Worm Coil or Primeval Titan, both are fine. Uh, I, I, think, I, I like think the I'd Worm Coil. Worm Coil yeah. It's a little bit less dangerous against the possibilities of a Zealous Conscript. My thoughts, exactly. If he does have a Zealous, you can just gain the life right back. And yeah, he has two Zealous Conscripts in his hand, it looks like. Oh, primeval. Huh. That okay. is a little bit more dangerous. I mean, honestly, a land here means uh, nine damage that Maxwell sits, and then the land gets right. fixed from Kevin. Oh, boy. Wow. Let's see if this actually happens to punish him. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I think I would have cast a conscript if I had had one. I mean, he's got eight there now, but it, that can be broken up in an instant when a Elish Norn gets scrapped. Right. Well... If he wants to, I mean, I don't know. That 8-8 eight, eight sitting back. I mean, is there a wolf run? There is a wolf run, so you're you're not gonna block it with your your big guy there. Huh. Yeah, this this is a really interesting line for both players. Kevin might be trying to set up some sort of combo kill here. Just really hoping that Max uh, doesn't respect the possibility of a, of a Zealous Conscripts. Hard to do since he's already seen it. So Max in the tank right now, trying to decide how best to play this turn. I mean, at this point, that 8-8... It is an issue, but he's got so many possibilities for like what he can do, how much damage he can do by pumping up his creature here. Like, and there's the pump, leaving mana available for after. Oh, and a day. And adjustment. there's a day. Wow. So that will wipe the board. Now, I, I certainly I would not have minded having. Maxwell at five if I had just stolen and come on in. Right. Especially with two more lands in play too because then he has that bonfire in his hand. Yeah. Always threatening lethal. Hellrider comes in for three plus one is four. Yep. Maxwell down to ten. And Kevin's hand is really potent. He just needs one more land to be able to play all his spells. He has a sword and two conscripts. We see another land from Maxwell. Yeah, we'll see how he can follow up to his Day of Judgment here. He's got an Ink Moth that he can turn into a Bird of Paradise. <laughs> um, otherwise, I mean, he's playing as though he has nothing in his hand. Right. Well, he, he can also just kill Kevin, unless I'm counting wrong, in, in two swings. 
Let's see, one to that's, activate, three to, yeah. That's two swings. That's two swings That's a there. big investment of your, of your turn. It really is, and then what happens if Kevin just says go with mana up? Is that a Huntmaster he has in his hands? I couldn't tell. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's Huntmaster mana. Maybe he's gonna leave the ink mouth back. There is one, two, three, four. Huntmaster, gain two life, make a wolf. Yep, go up to 12, go get a cigar now. Unless, of course, he cited that cigar out, we will see. I would not mind a cigar in against a deck that runs zealous conscripts. Wow. Oh, hmm. uh, well, I mean. Maybe he cited it out. But I would way prefer a cigar right now rather than a, a tutu. because then Sigarda becomes Wormcoil Engine. Here is a, con a bonfire for two? Yeah, looks like it. Ouch. And wow, you know, I, I really have to question how Max played this game. Uh, Back down to 10, and I agree with you. Pokey for one, Inky in the way. And is that a, yeah, he can't pump it though, okay. Max down to 10 again. Yep, that Hellrider is a 2 2. Or probably down to 9. Minus 2, minus 1. 9. And we'll see what his plan is now. He, he still has 8 mana available to him, so he can't quite kill in 2 hits unless he's drawn a land. Oh, Worm okay. Coil, which means that if he doesn't sacrifice it. Okay, there we go. I believe that. Kevin had the kill if he didn't sacrifice the worm coil. Yeah, I think so too. So he'll get two worms, a lifelink, a death touch, and go fetch up Her Majesty. Elish, Elish Norn, Norn kills the uh, the Wii 2 2 Hell Rider that was yep. shrunk earlier by the Ink Moth. Now, if Kevin steals the Elish, it will not kill both worms. No, it won't. If it did, Max would be dead. <laughs> It'd be pretty bad. Dead, dead to exactly. Yep. Nine is the key number that I learned with Elishnorn <laughs> as the opponent of the conscript players. Right. Kevin's choice of that Silverheart turn, I, I don't know about it. I mean, yeah, I think he would have won if he had not done that. With two conscripts in hand, yeah, I agree. Okay, so here he is. All he has to do is uh, Maxwell has to block one of these, uh, these players here. It looks like Death Touch is blocking. Seems the right, seems like the right block to me. Max and will take four to five life. Dead conscript. End of the turn. Back comes Elish, and we see lifelink for five life, plus the pump. Yeah, and that the tapped out opponents. That will do it. That's that's all she wrote. Yep. And they attack. They pump. And that's game. There's the handshake. Maxwell Brown. Takes it down, really close match actually, surprisingly close. Yeah, I, I think that they both uh, made a choice that put the game at a state that uh, was very, very 